Hey guys, today I'm preparing binding for a guitar that I glued the back onto yesterday. I think it's gonna frame the guitar really nicely. Yeah, I was at this point, I heard a knock on the workshop door. My friend Mike walked in with a really beautiful piece of walnut that he wanted to give to me. Safe to say that changed my plans for the day. This is the wood he gave me. As you can see, it's a little bit uh, beaten up currently, but once we plane into that, it's gonna be really nice, I hope. This walnut was actually felled locally in Acton. It was found on top of an old shipping container. Mike's a bit of a wizard at sourcing wood, so it's very kind of him to give me his offcuts. I just got a bunch of new bandsaw blades as behind me, so I'm gonna whack up a camera and you can watch me doing everything from start to finish. <laughs> I am the worst at making sure that I'm looking after my bandsaw, so I ordered a bunch of new blades and I finally, now I've moved into my new workshop, have got around in to installing one of them. I'm going to be using the biggest bandsaw blade that I have. It's a really good one for resawing. I don't know, I'm not sure about the TPI, etc, but it's, it's a big bandsaw blade. It will hopefully cut through this walnut like a dream. But while I'm changing my bandsaw blade, it is a really good opportunity to give my machinery a really good clean because I haven't had this machinery for long, but you don't have to be an expert in power tools to understand that if you keep it clean, it will last longer. So I've just got a little paintbrush and I'm going around all of the nooks and crannies and dusting them out. Also putting on this massive blade is definitely gonna damage my hands, so I make sure I wear gloves. Once it's manually running smoothly, I'll just like do a couple turns by hand. I will turn it on and leave it for about two minutes to make sure that it is not having any problems or it's jarred. But I also am checking the table because every time I change the blade, I make sure it's square because we don't want to be cutting into this walnut and it going off at an angle. And of course, safety first, guys. this for bindings I want the colour to be fairly even the whole way through and when I cut into this walnut I did see a lot of spalting. I don't know if you know what spalting is but I'm just gonna drop in here and actually tell you what it means because it's quite cool I mean it looks awesome look at that it's these black beautiful lines and people use that a lot for furniture and whatever uh, but what spalting actually means is this so wood is susceptible to fungus and fungal invasion. And when the fungus gets its hands on a nice bit of tree, it strips the tree of its nutrients. When two colonies meet each other, they leave this like striking black line. It's almost like they're clashing spears and leaving debris behind. Subsequently, you have the attacked areas which are stripped of nutrients and are therefore very spongy. Juxtaposed with these hard areas which are the original state of the wood before they have been robbed of their nutrients. The result is that really glorious, beautiful, spalting look. And here is an example of that in my mentor's guitar. This is actually spalted beech. And you can see there, it's really, really quite significant. But it looks so amazing. By the way, I, I don't think I've introduced my mentor before, but her name is Rosie and she is the most amazing woman. You should totally check out her work. She founded the Turnstone Guitar Company. I did my second apprenticeship there with Rosie. She's recently employed her husband, Carl, to come on board as well. He's an awesome dude. They're just great people to get to know if you're into guitar making. Beautiful instruments as well. Anyway, back to the bindings. Actually, Rosie was the person who told me how to make bindings because in my first apprenticeship, they, uh, my mentor actually bought his, which I thought was a bit of a cop out. Anyway, I found a piece that worked for me. It was a lot lighter and creamier than any walnut I've ever used. I've, I think I've only ever used USA black walnut. I mean, I think I made a photo frame out of some English walnut last year at some point, but I've never actually used this in guitar making just USA black walnut and to be fair my last guitar was made out of USA black walnut and it was such a dream to work with. Now I do have a, a drum sander and a planar thicknesser but it's gonna sound a bit insane but I don't go to the gym so sometimes I just really enjoy a bit of manual planing. It also gets me to kind of feel acquainted with the wood and see how it's behaving and which grain direction it's running and if there are knots and that kind of thing. So I am planing this by hand. I'm using my Lee Nielsen number seven, but I do have a bit of thickness to come off. So I will run it through the drum sander before I finish it off.
establishing a clean edge with a shooting board because there's live edge that needs to come off. It's going to impact the thickness of my binding, so I need to make sure that's out of the way. Also, can I just say how creepy that bandsaw blade is in the background? Like it just keeps wobbling and when I sped this up I was like, what is that? What is that? And I've cut down this, this clip quite a lot obviously and um, yeah, it's creepy. Anyway, I have changed my blade again because obviously I'm doing delicate cutting now so I'm using a really, really fine bandsaw blade and again, I am so happy with this bandsaw and this, these bandsaw blades. They're the Axe Calibre ones from Axminster. I'll drop a link to them in my bio. They are great. I'm also going to drop the model of Bansaw in because somebody asked that in the comments last time. Now I prepared some purfling before this video, so I've got black, white, black purfling scheme. So all I'm going to do is glue the walnut binding onto this purfling scheme, which I'm going to trim down to fit the walnut. Gorilla polyurethane glue. I will of course eventually make this wood into bindings, so it needs to be glued up with something that will be able to be malleable and bent under heat, but also won't separate when it's heated. It operates as a kind of foam as well, which is quite cool. Very strong, it's perfect for the job really, so that's why I use it. I also love these clamps because when they're clamped up, they kind of look like ducks, so I call them my duck clamps. Again, they're from Axminster, I've dropped a link to those in the bio too. later I came back and unclamped them. And it's finally time to chop the bindings into actual bindings. I love this part, you really see the bindings come to life. It's a very simple process making bindings, but it's one of actually my favorite just because you can see your scheme coming together. And it's one of those things where you're just like, that is so pretty, I love it. I've got this Tasmanian Blackwood guitar that I might put them on. Uh, this is actually a Koa one that I'm holding up against. Can't wait to cut the binding channels and show you the proper thing in a future video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this video. Like, subscribe, follow for more. I'm going to put a link to some of the things I used in this video. Feel free to check those out if you fancy. I can't wait to put these bindings on a guitar. I might be doing that on a stock build that I have fairly soon. See you soon.